Well, good morning. This is the morning prayer service, second Sunday of uh, Advent. St. Michael and All Angels in Eureka, Montana. And today we relight the candle of hope. And now we light the candle for the second Sunday in Advent. This is the candle of peace. As we prepare for the coming of Jesus, we remember that Jesus is our hope and our peace. May we receive God's light as we hear the words of the prophet Isaiah. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and Prince of Peace. Gracious God, Grant that we may find peace as we prepare for our Lord's birth. May divisions in ourselves and in our families be peacefully resolved. May there be peace in our cities and in the countries of our world. Help us to see the paths of peace in our lives and then give, us, give to us courage to follow them. Lord, let us remember that you only are the giver of lasting peace and that you are always with us. Amen. Our service for morning prayer begins on page 75 of the Book of Common Prayer. And our opening acclamation for Advent, the glory of the Lord shall be revealed and all flesh shall, shall see it together. Go to our confession and let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Your invitatory, Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Our King and Savior draws now draws near. Come, let us adore him. We'll pray the Jubilate, found on page 82. Be joyful in the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his presence with a song. Know this, the Lord himself is God. He himself has made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and call upon his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his faithfulness endures from age to age. We follow that with Psalm 85, verses 1 and 2, and 8 through 13, that's found on page 708. And we pray this together. You have been gracious to your land, O Lord. You have restored the good fortune of Jacob. 
You have forgiven the iniquity of your people and blotted out all their sins. I will listen to what the Lord God is saying, for he is speaking peace to his faithful people and to those who turn their hearts to him. Truly his salvation is very near to those who fear him, that his glory may dwell in our land. Mercy and truth have met together. Righteousness and peace have kissed each other. Truth shall spring up from the earth, and righteousness shall look down from heaven. The Lord will indeed grant prosperity, and our land will yield its increase. Righteousness shall go before him, and peace shall be a pathway for his feet. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our first lesson is from Isaiah, chapter 40, verses 1 through 11. Comfort, O oh, comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem, and cry to her that she has served her term, that her penalty is paid, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries out, In the wilderness prepare the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places a plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all people shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, Cry out. And I said, What shall I cry? All people are grass. Their constancy is like the flower of the field. The grass withers. The flower fades when the breath of the Lord blows upon it. Surely the people are grass. The grass withers. The flower fades. But the word of our gods will stand forever. Get you up to a high mountain, O Zion, herald of good tidings. Lift up your voice with strength, O Jerusalem, herald of good tidings. Lift it up, do not fear. Say to the cities of Judah, Here is your God. See, the Lord God comes with might, and his arm rules for him. His reward is with him, and his recompense before him. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms and carry them in his bosom and gently lead the mother sheep. The Word of the Lord. We'll respond to the first reading with Canticle 11, found on page 87. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has dawned upon you. For behold, darkness covers the land, Deep gloom enshrouds the peoples. But over you the Lord will rise, and his glory will appear upon you. Nations will stream to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawning. Your gates will always be open. By day or night they will never be shut. They will call you the city of the Lord, the Zion of the Holy One of Israel. Violence will no more be heard in your land, ruin or destruction within your borders. You will call your walls salvation, and all your portals praise. The sun will no more be your light by day. By night you will not need the brightness of the moon. The Lord will be your everlasting light, and your God will be your glory. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our second lesson is from Second Peter, chapter 3, verses 8 through 15a. Do not ignore this one fact, beloved, that with the Lord one day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years are like one day. The Lord is not slow about his promise, as some think of slowness, but is patient with you, not wanting any to perish, but all to come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief, and then the heavens will pass away with a loud noise, 
and the elements will be dissolved with fire, and the earth and everything that is done on it will be disclosed. Since all these things are to be dissolved in this way, what sort of persons ought you to be in leading lives of holiness and godliness, waiting for and hastening the coming of the day of God, because of which the heavens will be set ablaze and dissolved and the elements will melt with fire? But in accordance with his promise, we wait for new heavens and a new earth where righteousness is at home. Therefore, beloved, while you are waiting for these things, strive to be found by him at peace, without spot or blemish, and regard the patience of our Lord as salvation. The Word of the Lord. We respond to this with Canticle 19, the Song of the Redeemed, page 894. O ruler of the universe, Lord God, Great deeds are they that you have done, surpassing human understanding. Your ways are ways of righteousness and truth, O King of all the ages. Who can fail to do you homage, Lord, and sing the praises of your name? For you only are the Holy One. All nations will draw near and fall down before you, because your just and holy works have been revealed. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our Gospel is from Mark, chapter 1, verses 1 through 8. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As it is written in the prophet Isaiah, See, I am sending my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way the voice of one crying out in the wilderness. Prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, The one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. The Gospel of the Lord. This is my sermon. With a recent time change, mornings are darker and longer than ever. In this, I rise early, make a pot of coffee, and sit in the dark for a while before starting my day. Recently, as the coffee brewed, and I sat in my rocking chair by the fire, waiting for it, I got up and lit a candle on the advent wreath on the kitchen table. The light that glowed in the dark from that one candle was astonishing. It is only one small candle, but the deep dark of the morning was so richly transformed by the flame that I became aware of seeing in a way I had not noticed before. We expect the same thing, I guess, when we turn on the light in the morning for all to be illumined, but this was different. This light was different. There was a halo around the flame that stretched across the room and touched on everything. I sat still with my cup and watched the candlelight flicker, and thought of the words of Isaiah, the people who sat in darkness have seen a great light. This is the season of Advent in the church, which is a waiting and preparation time before Christmas. We green the church and our homes with garlands, an Advent wreath, and wreaths waiting for the light of the world to be born, for the light of the world to come again, and in the midst of a dark and troubled world, we light candles to symbolize this light who is to come, Jesus Christ, the light of the world. John the Baptist was the messenger, the voice of one crying out in the wilderness. Prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight, he cried. John called people to repent, to change their way of living 
and to be baptized, to be made new, to make a proclamation in front of everyone in water, to turn away from sin, from whatever separated them from God. In many ways, the world was as difficult then as it is now. There was a wide rift between the rich and the poor. Governments were dangerous and corrupt, and religious systems were alienating and powerful. Repent, John preached. Confess your sins and change the way you think and be and do. Change to God-focused thinking and being and doing. You and I pray this every Sunday when we confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us. This is our prayer of repentance. This is what John was calling people to do, to change their way of being, that we may delight in God's will and walk in God's ways to the glory of God's name. Brian McLaren, the author of Everything Must Change, writes, Jesus saw that his contemporaries were stuck in their own suicidal system, driven by their own defective framing story. A framing story is described like this. Whenever we belong to a group, from a family to a church, to a fan club, to a political party, to a nation, we are under the influence of that group's framing story, learning where we come from, what's going on, where we are situated in the story's plot line, where we are going, how we should act, and what we are here for. If our framing story is wise and strong, realistic and constructive, it can send us on a hopeful trajectory. But if our framing story is dysfunctional, weak, false, unrealistic, or destructive, it can send us on a downward arc, a dangerous high-speed joyride toward unpeace, unhealth, unprosperity, and even unlife. Jesus proposed a radical alternative, a profoundly new framing story that he called the good news. News, of course, means a story, a story of something that has happened or is happening that you should know about. Good news, then, would mean a story that you should know about because it brings hope, healing, joy, and opportunity. Jesus was saying, in essence, there are a lot of bad stories in our world, but I have a good story that frames the bad ones, that puts them in a new light, that says they aren't the last word. I have a good story that inspires healing and transformative action in our world. Jesus says, in essence, I have been sent by God with this good news, that God loves humanity, even in its lostness and sin. God graciously invites everyone and anyone to turn from his or her current path and follow a new way. Trust me and become my disciple and you will be transformed and you will participate in the transformation of the world which is possible beginning right now. If our framing story tells us that we are free and responsible creatures in a creation made by a good, wise, and loving God, and that our Creator wants us to pursue virtue, collaboration, peace, and mutual care for one another and all living creatures, and that our lives can have profound meaning if we align ourselves with God's wisdom, character, and dreams for us, then our society will take a radically different direction and our world will become 
a very different place. All three readings today talk about the need to prepare the way for the coming of the Lord. All three readings tell us that if our lives are not what they should be, then we should do something about it. We can do exactly what John the Baptist told people of his time to do. Repent. Begin anew. Align ourselves with God's wisdom, character, and dreams for us, and prepare for the Son of the living God to be born in our hearts and our lives. Perhaps it helps to rise early in the day, when it is still very dark, to sit with a cup of coffee in our hands, to light one astonishing candle, and watch the flame change everything before our very eyes. The people who sat in darkness have seen a great light. Amen. This is our offertory. But do not neglect to do good and to share what you have, for such sacrifices are pleasing to God. Merciful God, we offer with joy and thanksgiving what you have first given us, ourselves, our time, and our possessions, signs of your gracious love. Receive them for the sake of him who offered himself for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We continue with the prayers found on page 97. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We'll pray suffrages A, page 97. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world, for only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. Our collect of the day, merciful God, who sent your messengers, the prophets, to preach repentance and prepare the way for our salvation. Give us grace to heed their warnings and forsake our sins, that we may greet with joy the coming of Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We pray a collect for peace. O God, the author of peace and lover of concord, to know you as eternal life, and to serve you as perfect freedom. Defend us, your humble servants, in all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in your defense, may not fear the power of any adversaries, through the might of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. A prayer for mission. O God, you have made of one blood all the peoples of the earth and sent your blessed Son to preach peace to those who are far off 
and to those who are near. Grant that people everywhere may seek after you and find you. Bring the nations into your fold. Pour out your spirit upon all flesh and hasten the coming of your kingdom through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We pray for the special needs and concerns of this congregation and abroad. We pray for Aaron and Ann, Avery, Becky and family, Bonnie, Cam and family, Carol and family, Shiz, Chloe, Dan and Patty, Dee and Sam, Derek, Don and Linda, Gwyn, Jillian, Joanne, John and Sharon, Jordana, Judith, Kay, Leanne and Bill, Lucena, Megan and Sophia, Michael, Mike and Joanne, Misha and family, Nathan, Nicole, Noel, Paisley, Pat, Rosemary, Ruby, Ruth, Sarah, Sue, Sue and family, Tom and Sandy, and Tom. We pray for all people affected by COVID-19. We pray for healthcare workers and their families. We pray for all who have died from it. And I just heard this morning, 2,600 people died yesterday from COVID in the United States. We pray for all whose lives have been distorted by drastic weather and its effects, especially the people in Honduras, which is underwater, to the rooftops all across the land after two hurricanes back to back. Please remember to send your dollars for Episcopal Relief and Development to help with such calamities. We pray for all who live under the dark cloud of racial injustice. We pray for this country sorely divided by racism hatred and politics. We pray for immigrants and their families. We pray for Woodbank recipients and volunteers. We pray for veterans and their families. We pray for our Bishop, Marty Stebbins and her family, the Diocese of Montana, Holy Trinity, Troy, the Diocese of Jerusalem and Peace in the Holy Land. We pray for Chrysalis School, Camp Marshall, all victims of violence, especially children. We remember the anxious and the fearful. We pray for this planet, our island home. And this is a prayer written by our Doug Merrill. Heavenly Father, thy truly amazing grace that we see and feel every day surrounds and lives within us through the beautiful and mysterious power of your Holy Spirit. Grant us, Father, in thy mercy to carry into our world each day a gracious spirit. And as we greet our brothers and sisters here on earth, may we, in a small way, mirror the holy grace we have received. Amen. O oh, most mighty and merciful God, in this time of grievous sickness, we flee to you for help. Deliver us, we beseech you, from our peril. Give strength and skill to all those who minister to the sick. Prosper the means made use for their care and grant that perceiving how frail and uncertain our life is, we may apply our hearts to that heavenly wisdom which leads to eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. 
We'll close with a general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all, for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And, we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that, with truly thankful hearts, we may show forth your praise not only with our lips but in our lives by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. And here is a prayer for putting on a face mask by the Reverend Richard Bott. Beautiful prayer. Creator God, as we prepare to go into the world, help us see the sacramental nature of wearing this cloth. Let it be a tangible, invisible way of living love for our neighbors as we love ourselves. Christ Jesus, since our lips will be covered, uncover our hearts, that people would see our smile and the crinkles around our eyes. Since our voice may be muffled, help us to speak clearly, not only with our words, but with our actions. Holy Spirit, as the elastic touches our ears, remind us to listen carefully to all those we meet. May the simple piece of cloth be a shield and banner, and may each breath that it holds be filled with your love. In your name and in that love we pray. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Our worship has ended. Our service begins. Let us stay home as we can. Wear masks. Keep distance. Wash our hands. And take care of one another, rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Thanks be to God.